Thanksgiving, glory to God. You may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'd like for you to welcome your neighbor to church this morning. Greet them, give, give them a warm welcome to service. The Lord is in our midst and we know it. Say to your neighbor, your life will not remain the same again. You are not saying it. Neighbor, your life will not remain the same again. Hallelujah. is our year of glorification. And so we cannot remain the same. We get transformed every time we appear before our God in Zion. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give God praise for the privilege yet again to bring the word of God even unto the house. The book of Mark. Mark. Gospels chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I want you to challenge your neighbor this morning. Just look to your right and left. Make sure your neighbor has a Bible and a writing note in church. Whether they are writing it on their phones, or they are writing it with their pen and book, make just look around. If there's any neighbor that didn't come to church with the Bible, you may want to encourage that neighbor in 30 seconds. Preach to them. Preach. Preach quickly to them. Tell them how wrong it is for them to come to church without the Bible and their books. And we're preaching this morning. Preach to them. Don't just come to listen and to hear. Come to learn. And in learning, you take notes. In learning, you participate in the reading of the Word of God. And so let that be for everyone that has been preached to this morning, wouldn't come to church with those um, materials. Let it not repeat itself in the name of Jesus. Uh, but be kind to your neighbor this morning and share your Bibles with them if they don't have. As we read the book of Mark, Gospels, chapter 16. Leading an impactful life. Mark chapter 16. By the Spirit of a living God, we'll be going on a series. I don't know how long or short it might be. But from now on, we'll be going on. This, this scripture will be more like an anchor scripture for us. That I believe is a very common scripture for as many who have been involved in turning many who are in darkness onto the light of Christ. You will be very familiar familiar with this scripture. Verse 15. Jesus, Jesus, after appearing unto the eleven, after his resurrection, he spoke unto them and gave them a commandment. And he said unto them, can we read it together? One to go. Amen. 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 We are reading it like we are very cold. Can we read it with authority this morning? One to go. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every what? Every creature. That word struck me when I read it again. This has, this has never read that scripture before. So everything created by God needs to hear the gospel. Every creature. Even the dog in your house must hear the gospel. <laughs> oh, you've forgotten. If you get to heaven and you find some animals there, don't be surprised. Because when Jonah went to the city of Nineveh and preached the gospel under the influence of the Spirit, the Bible says men and animals repented. People brought their animals before God and they repented together. So we might find them in heaven. He said, preach to every, the gospel, preach that gospel which is the good news to every creature, everyone, none is exempted. And he said, go ye into 
all the world. And I like that all the world as it's rendered in the KJV. Not just a particular world, but all the world. All the world. All the world. Finance world, business world, all kinds of world that you may want to think about this morning. There is no limit and boundary to where the gospel of the kingdom should be preached. I want to read Jude chapter 1, even though it's a chapter, but I will read Jude 1. Um, it's just a line in that Jude that I want to pick up this morning. KJV. verse 12. How many of us heard about the, the floods that happened in Dubai recently? All right. You know, there is this thing they do over there. They call it cloud seeding. Even though they say it's not responsible for the present calamities. But they, call, they do something called cloud seeding manually they cause rain to fall. You know, God has given man all kinds of wisdom and knowledge and ability. And because it's a very dry place, an arid ground, they initiate rainfall. All kinds of chemicals, you can Google it and read about it much later. They put them together that can make clouds to form, crystallize, and condense. They have studied it that much, and so they put it, those chemicals, they mount it on aircraft, and the aircraft will go above the clouds and look for clouds that have formed together. And they will sprinkle those, inject those chemicals into the cloud. And it causes a speedy condensation of the cloud. And then all of a sudden, you see rain falling, you know, very, very quickly. God has given man that ability, that wisdom to be able to do that. You know, and they cause rain to fall artificially during the times when it is needed, particularly during the famine season. You know, but this scripture I want to read this morning, the Bible talked about some set of people that I may not want to go into the details of this sect, but there is something it said about them. It said they are clouds that are without water. And I will tell you the reason why I'm reading this scripture. It talked about those that have gone in the way of Cain, the error of Balaam. Remember we talked about Balaam last Sunday. It said they are spots in the feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. You know, while growing up, um, or even in this season, let's even use this as an example, the heat in the country is unprecedented. I don't know how many people have been feeling the heat. It's been, it's been like no other. I don't, I don't know if I've ever been, you know, <laughs> some people said the gate of hell has been opened. <laughs> you know, jokingly. You know, but imagine in this kind of weather when everything is so hot, and then you find clouds gathered. These days when you see clouds forming and everywhere is turning dark, you are excited because at least it will give some reprieve, some relief from the heat. And when the rain comes down the earth, you know, it waters the earth and everything cools down a little. Imagine in this kind of weather when everything is so heated up and you find very bright cloud turning into dark clouds forming together. In the anticipation, just like Elijah prayed and saw the hand in the heaven, and he said to the servant, go and tell Ahab the rain is about to fall. And imagine all of that happening, wind blowing, everybody running inside, and then we are waiting for the rain to drop. And then we wait and wait and wait until the cloud begins to lift and bright things, and then the rain doesn't come. It's a disappointment. It will bring a lot of disappointment to men, to hearts, to farmers, to everyone who is expecting some form of relief. And the Bible likens some believers. It's talking about believers in the book of Jude, chapter 1. They are not unbelievers. It likens them to this type of cloud that forms in the midst of it when they are most needed. And all of a sudden, when the world is expecting them to bring relief, succor, bringing hope, you know, in the midst of despair. They just fade away. They make noise, you know, and their impact just wanes. It just goes aside as though nothing ever happened, you know. It's a disappointment on the creature that is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And Jude was encouraging us not to be in the company or the congregation of this sect of people who will have opportunity. God has presented opportunities for them to be a witness of him to the dying and the lost world. And when 
the angels are beckoning. God is on, you know, the Bible says there is joy in heaven when a sinner repents. And heaven is congregating and the drums are rolling. A sinner is on, God has organized, orchestrated an event for a sinner to be converted. And a believer refuses to open his mouth to bring the light of the gospel. Just take the example of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch that God organized that event. And the man was reading from the book of Psalms. And he did, I mean, the, yeah, the book of Isaiah. He was reading in chapter 53, you know, about Jesus Christ. And he, his heart was already opened. He just needed the rain to fall. And the Holy Ghost said to Philip, join this chariot. The angel of the Lord said to Philip, join this chariot. Imagine Philip turning down that opportunity. That would be a, a major loss to the kingdom of heaven. And when I was preparing for this time of administration, the Holy Ghost said to me very clearly, I have organized many events. I have put together circumstances around my people. I have put together things that should stir up the passion for witnessing, for bringing my name to bear, and enthroning my name in the hearts of those who do not know me or those who have once known me and have gone back or backslidden. But my people have refused to seize the moment. They have refused to seize the opportunity. The commandment is very clear in Mark chapter 16 as we go into the word of God this morning. That was just an introduction. Go ye into all the world. Very clear. He told them where to go. Very, very clear statement. Into all the world. He told us what to do. Preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. So we have an assignment that has a place we have an assignment that has a responsibility, like a commandment. You know, the JDs are clear. The job description is very clear. Just preach the gospel to all creatures. The only thing that that scripture did not present to us is the how. Go ye to the world. That's the location. When? We are going now. The Bible says he said to the disciples they should hurry in Jerusalem. So it was not a commandment to be fulfilled in some later day. It was a commandment for the then disciples as it is a commandment for us today. Go ye now into all the world. So the time is very clear. He said the harvest is truly plenteous. Laborers are few. He said, and he, he, he has sent us to nations. So we have an idea of where he wants us to go. To families, to people, to industries. You know, to commercial places, to the malls, everywhere. And to do what the gospel, to preach the gospel. But he didn't give us how to do it. And that's why... It is an open-ended affair. Evangelism is not one-sided. Evangelism or preaching the gospel is not in just one particular way. There are several ways and several means by which the gospel can be preached to all of the world. And we live in a very, very... I must say, when if you are one who, you know, read and research about world religion and how far or how fast certain religions are beginning to grow and perpetuate themselves in some nations you will know that even in our nation where we live, we are living in dangerous times. And I have not come to scare anyone, but they are the realities be, that are befalling the nation where even where we live in now. You know, there is something that is common now going on in the east. You know, the eastern part of Nigeria for as many, many of us may have been in Lagos for too long to even know things like that are happening. But if you are very conversant with the events going on in the east, you realize that there are certain gospels that are going into the east now. Islam is growing very fast in the eastern part of Nigeria. It's an uncommon thing. Maybe, I mean, that's the, that's the way we have known it, to find all kinds of mosques and all kinds, you know, the, the children of the bond woman perpetuating themselves in the eastern part. They are, they would rather be Roman Catholics or, or believers or they are traditionalists. You know, but now it is growing so fast. And, and many of us do not realize the strategies by just like they do in Europe, is becoming the most prominent religion now in Europe because all of a sudden a generation is, is should I say a generation has gone or is going, and the younger generation who do not even care about anything with Christianity or the fear of the Lord would sell their cathedra cathedrals, would sell their churches to mosques, and they they are so strategic in that they may not have the Holy Ghost, but they have the wisdom of this world. There is evangelism by procreation. So they go into countries, they go into nations and marry their women. That's what is going on in the Eastern, I mean, in Europe. You know, these things are not, um, they are not rumors. They are happening. There are countries that I, I, I can tell you today that the, 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 the male population is so low in comparison to the female com, uh, population. And they are calling for male, you know, young men to come in just to be able to sustain a generation. And 
these guys are taking opportunity to do these things. They send their, the, the, the other day when we saw protests going on around in, you know, in, the, in Europe, in the UK, they were surprised seeing millions of Muslims marching on London streets, protesting because of the war going on between Palestine and, and Israel. And they were wondering, how did we get, we get here? How have we come about this? That all of a sudden, foreigners, Pakistanis, Palestinians, all kinds of nations coming from the Arab world have taken over. They come via several routes. Very, very strategic in the way they are spreading. You know, in fact, the United Kingdom, I'm not here, I'm not a prophet of doom, and, you know, don't mark my words, is a place today that is, <laughs> God forbid, it's just an implosion can happen every, any, any time, you know, from now. You know, they do not pray for all, any kind of confrontation or, or uprising. That nation is almost doomed. I'm not the prophet, prophet of doom. But because they have strategically located themselves in all nooks and crannies, they are taken over not just by procreation, even by educational routes, all kinds of routes. They are taking over. And believers are just there. You know, the Bible says in the days of Noah, everybody just continuing eating and drinking and playing and marrying and giving in marriage. The world will just go on. Nothing is happening around us until the floods, the Bible says, came. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, these things are happening to us even now. Believers are asleep. The passion with which the gospel was even brought to us in this part, that passion has dwindled over time. Satan has changed his strategy. Satan is evolving. Like I preached here many times about the fact that when we were growing up, the strategy of Satan was more about, you know, the, we, the church is growing. When we were growing up, were about spiritual warfare. You always find a witch or a wizard. or We would go, we would, anytime we are going to church, it's like we are going for war because we know that Satan or a crusade, somebody will come there to come and suck people's blood. It was all about witches and wizards. That was the kind of gospel we had. But now, it's like there are no witches anymore. There are no wizards anymore. There is no demon anywhere again. Everybody is just fine, put together, well-dressed. But I'm telling you, Satan is more systemic or systematic now. He works in industries, through technology, through all kinds of things. I mean, there was a movie in my house yesterday. You know, I just I had the privilege to watch, and it was about a serial killer who did all he was doing. Killed people, maimed them, manipulated you know, mutilated bodies and all kinds of things happened in the movie. And at the end of the day, the movie ended that the guy was not caught. In fact, he was almost celebrated. And I said, if a young man should watch this kind of movie today, what, what, what will come to mind? That I can go scot-free having done this kind of terrible things. And they are happening right before our eyes. And the least that we can do, which the Lord of the harvest has commanded, he said, pray ye, the Lord of the harvest, that he may send have a into his field. That's the very least that we can do. We are not even doing. The least that we can do, which if I do not even have the opportunity to go witness or preach, I can pray so that God can raise harvesters. He can raise men. That's the very least that we can do. How many churches, please ask ourselves, let's be very clear this morning, still gather to pray for souls. How many ministries are still concerned about the missionaries in the mission field? When, I don't want to keep saying when we were growing up in the faith, but most of us witnessed these things for the older generation who are here. They, they have even witnessed it more. Every church had a connection to a mission field. Every ministry had a hand in a missionary field. You know, in, a mission, in the life of a missionary in one country or in one state or the other. Now, I don't even know if churches still do it anymore. The ones who are still in the field today are those who are convinced and passionate and doing it irrespective of what life presents. Our hand is not seen even in the mission fields anymore. No wonder the fields have become almost like a playing ground for the devil. No wonder the world has almost become a playing ground for, you know, we say LGBT and we say all kinds of things happening now. The, the unusual has become the usual. The abnormal has become the normal now. And many... We talk about it. We say, oh, where is the world going? But what exactly are we doing to turn the tide and to change the narrative in favor of the gospel of the true light of God? Let's be honest with ourselves this morning. I've come to challenge myself as I've come to also challenge you. You know that many times pastor will come here and say, how many souls have you brought to Jesus this month, this season, this quarter? You know, he just says it and it feels like he's saying it in passing. 
And I know how passionate some of us were about these things in time past. All of a sudden, something has happened. Something has happened. And God is calling us back to the basis this morning. This is the most powerful tool in the hand of God. Evangelism. And God needs laborers, men, women, young and old. And never forget, man is very cardinal in this assignment. When Jesus was speaking, he wasn't talking to ghosts. He wasn't speaking to spirits. He was speaking to men. Man is so influential as he is powerful. There are many things I've said about man. We've talked about the power of one man, the impact of one man. Man almost seemed like an irresistible force that can cause anything to happen, both for good or for evil. Whoever that man wishes to submit his, the control of his life onto, you know, he can do anything. He can almost do and undo. And the agenda of God, in like manner as the agenda of Satan, <laughs> is that <laughs> he can be at the control, the control center of the hearts of men. And that's the agenda of the enemy. Man is at the center of the game. On the field today is man. And you find on the sideline God on one side and the enemy, the adversary on the other side. And both of them are striving to see who would have the most influence on that one man that is on the level playing field of the world. And God is seeking to take influence. God, as the enemy, is also trying to, you know, force down his own agenda on man. God made man to have dominion. We know that from Genesis chapter 1. That's the mandate that God gave to man. But Satan always wants to change that order by dominating man. The equation is such that God is seated in the heavenly places. Man that has given his life to Christ, whosoever is in Christ, sits with him in the heavenly places. Far above principalities, power, Satan, everyone. He said he has put all, all things under his feet. When he was speaking in Hebrews concerning man, he has put all things under the feet of man, including Satan. He said he has put all things Say, demon spirit, economy, influence, everything. Not, he said there is absolutely nothing that he has forgotten to put on, under man. Everything has been put under man. He said, but yet we do not see all things under him. Because Satan is manipulative. He goes round. He wants to change the order. He wants to come over and above man and put man in subjection and say to God, your mission has been frustrated. Your mission cannot pass. I have successfully changed the order. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. He wanted to take back dominion from man, and that's why he came to deceive Eve and Adam. And he temporarily took charge of that place. But God had a better plan, as we all know, in Jesus. That Jesus came to restore back the order so that the dominion of Satan can no longer be over man. Man is so key. And that's why even when Jesus came, you know, to, to bring back the order, the enemy thought that by destroying him, he would have also rendered God's agenda useless. No wonder he said in Luke chapter 22, he's in verse 3 now. He said, and Satan entered into Judas. Satan entered, in the same way till today, Satan keeps entering into men's life. Don't tell me, even as a child of God, if you are not well aligned and positioned, sometimes like Peter, you will say to Jesus, you cannot go to the cross. Satan briefly uses men, even those that are believers, if we are not careful. He said, let him that think he stand. Let him take it, lest he fall. We are so close. There is a very thin line between standing and falling. And if you are not careful, even as an anointed servant, or anointed man of God, you can be borrowed as a vessel in the hand of the enemy. Satan entered into Judas and he sold his master. The story of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. When the church began to multiply, the Bible says, when Peter was speaking to him, he said, why did you allow Satan to fill your heart. Satan is still filling men's heart even till this day with thoughts, with imaginations, with devices, with advices, with counsels, things that will not glorify the name of the Lord that you know he brings them. They, they look so attractive, so beautiful, so gravi, uh, uh, gratifying to the flesh when it is done. Satan is by the corner every day. The Bible says sin lies by the door and he wants to take charge. He wants to take dominion. And, and the reason why he does that is, the, is, is because of the fact that Satan also understands the power. And I've said it once and many times before on this altar that one man carries. Satan knows the ability that one man carries. And so when, when you see him, you know, 
something has happened in this nation before and um, maybe it's about now that believers are beginning to wake up and we're all aware of it. When we were to go back to the you know, democratic system in, in, in 1999, many, many people who seem to be clean, sane, civilized, educated people felt like we don't have any business in politics. What's our business there? And Satan seized the opportunity because even believers said we are not going there. Politics is not for the church. And Satan seized that power from there on. And so today we see them ruling by all kinds of devices, all kinds of instruments, poverty as an instrument, you know, all kinds of things as an instrument. They take the, because they are in, in charge, they are seemingly in power. Satan can influence them to come up with legacies and policies and directives. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar was in power in Babylon, we all know what he perpetrated. We know what Daniel, became of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, nobody must pray. We don't want to get to in that point where a, a king will rise, a Joseph will, I mean, a Pharaoh will come on the throne that does not know Joseph and say, close down all churches. I remember when we were in the university, the Holy Ghost is bringing out to my heart now. And, you know, the church of God was really marching on by the grace of God under our leadership as young men then, whilst then in school. And God was turning around the lives of people to the end that even, you know, parents from outside school living within Ibadan and its suburb started coming to student fellowships rather than going to home churches. There was a revival that God was birthing in the midst of young people, going for village evangelism, doing all kinds of things around Ibado for God. You know, a decree just came from nowhere. I'm not saying that they are devils, but I believe that that decree was instigated by the enemy because he saw the move of God that God was perpetuating in our days. He said, from now on, nobody must pray in public anymore, and they were that specific. Nobody must pray. It happened, though. It's not just in the day of Daniel. It's the only place we are allowed to pray is the chapel of resurrection. Near any hostel, wherever, you must not preach anymore. You cannot do money cries anymore. We used to use lecture theaters for, you know, fellowships. They banned all spiritual activities in lecture theaters to the point where most fellowships did not even have anywhere to fellowship again. It was a serious persecution and we're wondering. In fact, my vice president was arrested one night because he was praying. You know, and, and they called me and said, they, were, they, they took them to the station for praying. It happened. I'm not telling you, I'm telling you what happened while we were in the university. But we knew that it was Satan. And we gathered and we began to pray. We gathered and we began to pray. And one of the, you know, dean of the faculty of law, that woman stood for us and said, no, whatever happens, they will use my my faculty lecture theater for, for fellowship. And we're fellowshiping one morning and the VC drove in and they called me and said the VC was around and said, who gave you, you know, and dragged me to his house. Who gave you this place to, have I not, you know, and this is, <laughs> this is not just a member of the, <laughs> uh, 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 what's it called now, uh, of the Methodist church. The VC was one, <laughs> uh, it is well. You know, when Satan wants to do certain things, he can raise believers against believers. It was not a Muslim that was in power. It was, I don't know what they call them. Is it Vika or whatever? They had, they had a post or whatever, a Methodist. A man of God, an ordained minister, a Methodist. And he was the same who said, you must not do fellowship on campus. He said, you people are becoming too proud. You are students. You know, and he threatened, he said, I was not going to graduate. Of course, all of that is history today. Because we graduated to the glory of God. You know, but we had to pray. We had to go back to the place of God. Why do the Eden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth are gathered against his Lord, the Lord and his Christ. You know, why do the Egypt? They don't want the rule of Christ. They don't want the dominion of Christ. It's not convenient. Anywhere you see the light of Christ shining, homosexuals cannot, they don't want to be there. They will go violent against it. They, they want to break the bands of Christ over them. We don't want, they want to be reckless. They want to do anyhow. They don't want rule. They don't want to say, don't drink, don't smoke, you know, don't do this, don't do that. They don't want rules over them. And that's why they are raging and they are imagining against Christ. But just like the one who sits in heaven laughs, he's still laughing till today. He said he will speak to them in his sore displeasure. He will scatter them. And that God is still that powerful. For as many, that battle will not end until you have won. That's one thing I've realized with God. We won that battle. Even though we had to stay under the heat, under the rain, doing fellowship everywhere. Where, in fact, it came to a point where Sunday mornings, we did not, sometimes my phone would just be ringing everywhere. Where are we meeting today? We are not even aware. We'll just look for a space. 
we'll carry over 1,500 people and we'll go there to do fellowship. We were just moving and wondering until the Lord settled us. Where am I going this morning? That battle has not stopped. That battle is still raging. We don't want to come to a point where, you know, they tell us that we can no longer meet in church. You remember the times of Bwari, if you remember very clearly, there were some rules and some things that happened and they said, Baba Debo, you should step down. I, I don't know how many people were... <laughs> uh, there are certain things that we need to become part of in prayers and actively also participating so that the son of, of Aga will not take our place to the end that they make decrees and they have power to control the military, to enforce the decrees they make. And they say, you cannot pray here anymore. We don't know what we enjoy here in this part. Maybe we go to the north. Maybe we go to some other places where it's so difficult to even gather together to pray in the name of Jesus. In the days of disciples or the apostles, they said, they beat them blue-black and said, you must not preach or pray in this name anymore. They are against that name because they know that the name of the Lord is powerful. Where that name is raised, every demon and every foul spirit bows. And Satan always would protest. He would agitate. He does not want the mention of that name. And, and because Satan does not want that to happen, he comes in through men. And in the same way, as I've spoken about how the enemy oppressed, the same way Jesus did while he was on earth, there was some strategic conversion he did. The madman of Gadara. That was a man that the devil knew his destiny. I've not even gotten to, and my time is all, almost up already. He was a man that God had marked to save, to deliver ten cities. Imagine ten cities. He called it the Decapolis. That man had the destiny to change ten states. And this was a man that was bound by Satan he was a madman. And Satan didn't just put a demon. He put legions inside him. He said if he was one demon, maybe he can, one pastor can come and pray and the demon will go. He said this one is legion. The Bible says no man could pass by his way. He was not living among men. He was living in the tombs. He was living with devils. He said no man can. He said they will tie him with chains. He will break off the chains. And the Bible says Jesus said let us cross over to the other side. When the time for God, a troop will overcome you, he said in Genesis 49. He said, but you will overcome at last. When that time came for Jesus to deliver that man with an awesome, glorious destiny, as prophesied by his great four forefathers in the person of Jacob, who said, God, you will be overrun by a troop, but in the end, you will overcome at last. Jesus said, I have heard the alarm from heaven. It's time for God to overcome the troop. Let us go over to the other side. Demons came over. Those same demons came from that man and they stirred up the water. He said, this one we will drown. If the salvation of this man is in Jesus, we cannot, let's drown him. We can't kill Jesus' life, but we can stir up nature. You can want to go and preach or there's an opportunity for you to minister to someone and Satan will cause you to have hold up. It will cause your phone to go off. It will cause network to go it, Because that man, that one man, imagine what God has done through the life of Baba Adeboe today. What God is doing to our father in the house. Imagine if the light of the glorious gospel did not shine unto him. Imagine that one man that Jesus used or that minister, that minister that God used to change his life never ministered or died before that ministration. What would have become of his destiny? And Satan still does that today because he knows that if there is one man there who is holding the camera, if this man gets saved, many cities will be saved. He will go for everybody around him to be able to hinder them from coming to that man to bring the gospel. St. Paul said, many times I want to come to you, but Satan hindered us. He still does that till today. He tried to hinder Jesus. But, ah, he said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea, Jesus looked at it and said, hey, Kiri, you are too small. You are too small. They, and I have been summoned by eternity to deliver that man with a glorious destiny. He said, peace, be still. And not, not only did they, 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 there was, was there calmness, the Bible says, and immediately they got to the other side. They were heavenly transported by speed. And we know what happened when Jesus delivered that man. The Bible says he went on and won over 10 cities. That was a strategic conversion. Jesus spoke to the woman by the well. That was a strategic conversion. He was having a conversation with a woman. The disciples were wondering, when did our master talk, start talking to a woman? Jesus knew that there was a glorious destiny. And there are many glorious destinies around us. We walk with them. At, we do business with them. There are people that don't look like it. But the destiny of nation is inside of them. And you don't know one thing. Great is your glory and your reward in heaven by converting that one man. You may not be as prominent as Baba Deboye, but whoever won that soul today in heaven is celebrated. 
whoever won that soul to Jesus will be celebrated by God and saying, thank you, to, uh, my, my faithful servant, for doing your bid by bringing, because by that one man, many, 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 many sons, millions of sons have been brought into glory. Strategic conversion. It was in Acts of the Apostles as well. When I spoke about Philip earlier, it was a strategic conversion for that eunuch. And when the Holy Ghost said, to, I mean, the angel said, Peter, Philip, go to the ways out and join yourself with this chariot. Spoke to the Ethiopian eunuch. That guy left <laughs> Jerusalem from that day, went back to Ethiopia. He was a eunuch. But stories, church tradition has it that that man turned around the destiny of the entire land of Ethiopia. That's why I said it before, and we know it by history. The only country in Africa that was not uh, colonized is Ethiopia. They, they, the gospel of Jesus was there way before the colonial masters came. And God used that eunuch. Oh, we look at the life of Paul. Nobody could even preach to Paul. There are people today that it is not man that will do their conversion. There are some it will require God, an encounter. Nobody could have sat Paul down to preach to him. He knew too much. He was a doctor of the law. There are certain people that you, it's only your prayer and God will organize situations and circumstances to bring them to himself. There are people like that, that it will require God, angel, an encounter, a sickness, an event to bring them to Jesus. And God is saying, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers. Pray that this kind of people that carry this kind of awesome and glorious destiny can be brought into the kingdom of light. Paul was met on the way. It was one of the most strategic conversions of the New Testament. We all know what Paul did. I've not even gone into this message at all. I trust that the Lord will help me maybe by the next Sunday where we get to meet, we'll be able to go into the how because I've not even gotten into the books. I'm just doing basic introduction for us to understand the gravity, the importance of turning men from darkness onto light. Paul was speaking in Acts 26. He said, this is my vision. This is my mission statement. Agrippa, I, when I met Christ, by the way, he gave me a clear vision that I may bring men from darkness unto light, that I may turn them from the power of Satan unto God. That is still our vision, our mission till today. If you are seated here in the congregation, as I'm talking to myself or listening or watching online, and there is nobody within your sphere of influence that God is using you to bring from the kingdom of darkness into light, turning from the power of Satan unto God, that they can say that it is through your life your prayers, that they have, been, they have received emancipation, that they would have died but for your sake. Oh, they would have been sacked but for your sake. Oh, they would not have been able to ascend the height they have ascended but for your sake. Because it's not just by prayer. There is the part of the mouth and there is also the part of the wisdom. He said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. It's not just a mouth but also a wisdom. I, I see that many, many, many times we, we stay on the part of the mouth, which is the utterance. We, we ignore the part of the wisdom. There are many of us who will not even have to open our mouth to speak but by our wisdom where we are, where we walk, what we do. They said, no, this man is too excellent. Who, what, what, what is the secret of his excellence? How does he do his own, own things that is different from every other person? He does a presentation. Everybody says, wow. How does he do his own thing? There is a wisdom of God that he carries. And because of that, they come to the light of the gospel. They begin to ask questions. And by that, God is beginning to present opportunities for evangelism. Let's bow our heads this morning. We have not scratched it yet. I trust God that hopefully next time we'll come into the strategies. And if God wills that our Father in the house will also go on in this line. But let us thank God for his word. Thank God because you are that one man that God is using in this generation. He said, behold, I look for a man. He said, who shall go for us? Who will we send? Isaiah said, here am I, Lord. I am available. Send me. I want you to thank God this morning because you know you are a vessel in the hand of the Lord. And through your life, many sons shall be brought into glory. Give God all the praise this morning. You have heard the word of God this morning. And you are dead, you know that you are the one God is speaking to. You have not yet given your life to Jesus. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You cannot go and save when you are not saved, except you are an hypocrite. Salvation starts from you when you are saved. 
Brother Peter said, that which I have, I give unto you. You know, man gives what he does not have. If you have received salvation, you have a lot of it to share. I want your hand on your chest right now. I want you to talk to Jesus. Father, save my soul. Save my soul. I want to give my life to you. I want a journey with Jesus. I want an encounter with the Savior himself. I want to experience his glory. I want to experience his power. And I want to be that vessel. I want to be that light. I want to be that channel that will take Jesus to the hands of the herd. Lord, save my soul. Thank you, Father, for coming inside of me. Somebody declare. And declare, Lord Jesus, I believe you came, you died, and you rose from the dead. And I believe in your I believe in my heart. That when you rose, God raised us up together. And we are made to sit together, even with you in heavenly places. Therefore, this day I declare I'm saved because I believe. Thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. My Father, my God, as many as have just given their life to Jesus, if you are that person, just lift up your hands. The ushers may reach you wherever you are. Uh, just lift up your hands, all ears bowed, all eyes closed. Father, as many as have just given their lives to you right now, I pray, Lord, even that the light of salvation will continue to burn in their spirit. And that, Lord, these ones also will be mighty vessels in your hand to take your glory to the hands of the herd. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has spoken to us very strongly this morning. And this is an awakening call for all Christians. One or two things I just want to say about what he, he preached this morning. And the Lord just ministered something to my spirit, which will actually be a solution or an answer to somebody's quest. You have been there expecting the hand of God in several aspects of your life. You have been there expecting the glory of the Lord. You want to see the manifestations of His power. You want to see the dimensions of His demonstrations that can turn around your situation and take you to the mountain top where your expectations are fulfilled and your dreams are realized. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. The answer to every human quest is in God's power and the manifestations thereof. But until somebody understands the covenant and the contract of his power, you can't walk in it. As Pastor Tommy was preaching, the word just came to me and he said, tell them this. Romans chapter number 8, I just want to quickly share this as we begin to pray. Romans chapter number 8, I want all of us to read from verse 18. Romans chapter 8, please project from the 18th verse. Glory be to God in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest. The Lord said, as somebody here, you are going through a trial that has to do with an incrimination. The Lord said, I should let you know that I'm involved with you, and I will, at the end of the day, bring you out of this. Here, yeah, the Spirit of living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Romans chapter number 8, and then from the 18th verse, we all read together. Somebody reading on mic. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. One, two, go. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be com compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. For the earnest expectation everybody of the creature. Read, everybody read, yes. For, for the, the earnest, earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Mm -hmm. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That is just it. The Bible says the earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, I want you to understand something, ladies and gentlemen.
The whole world, the whole universe is waiting for your manifestation. Somebody is asking, Pastor, how do I pay my house rent? I got a good news for you. The housing industry is waiting for your manifestation. Somebody is saying, how am I going to pay the school fees of my children? They just resume in that trick. I got a good news for you. The financial world is waiting for your manifestation. Somebody is saying, Pastor, but it seems everything is crashing and everything is crumbling down. How am I going to be able to rise above the storms? Listen to me. Even the storms of life are waiting for your manifestations. Everything that is created, everything. The, remember the Bible, they say the NS expectation of mankind. is said of creation. Even the soil underneath your feet. The chair you are seated on. Ladies and gentlemen, everywhere, your house, everywhere, they are all waiting for the sons of God to come to manifestation to deliver them. The creature is under terrific pressure by demons and devils. Please understand, the Bible said they have been made subject to vanity. That is to say everything is upside down. At times we talk about the economy of Nigeria. We talk about this, we talk about that. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the things that are bizarre, the things that have gone the other way, they are all waiting for somebody to rise to say, look, I'm the son of God. And it's not just about your statement. They want to see the manifestation of the son. Now, what is the manifestation of the sons of God? The manifestation of the sons of God is the manifestation of the son of the most High God, Jesus Christ, in the power of the spirit through them. The Bible says the manifestation of the spirit is given unto all to profit with that. When the spirit of God starts manifesting in you, that spirit declares you as the son of God towards everybody. In 1 Kings chapter number 17, the Bible made us to understand that there was a woman that was called the widow of Zarephath. When her son died, she brought the son to Elijah. And Elijah took this dead body, laid on him, pray. And then, of course, brought the son back alive to the woman. You know what the woman said? He said, now I know you are a holy man of God. Now I, you see, before then, she didn't know. But here was a man who multiplied food in her house. You understand what I'm talking about? And the barrel of me shall not waste. Neither shall the fruit of his, uh, cruise of his seas. It happened in verse 11. After that, the son died. The woman had not yet known with some certain levels of miracles. But when she now saw the miracle of resurrection, she said, now I know <laughs> that you are a holy man of God and that the word of God in your mouth is true. That is the manifestation of the son of God at that time. The word is waiting to know who you are. The world is waiting to know. And some things will make you manifest. It is the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Now your manifestation is the liberation of humanity. Look at what he said. He said, even the old creature that has been subject to vanity, they are groaning, waiting for the adoption. Can you see it? Waiting to be brought into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Everything is waiting to be brought. Everything is crying, waiting for you to rise. Your family is crying, waiting for you to rise. Please, until Deborah will stand to say, I am Deborah in Israel. There is no deliverance for anybody there. He said, until I arose a mother in Israel. He said, the highways were bypassed. He said, strangers, ladies and gentlemen, seized in Israel. He said, the, the, the cities were unoccupied. He said, until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, things will continue to be upside down until you arise. Everything is waiting for you. A woman came to me one day. I said, Mama, in the house where you are living, now these people were rich. I went to bless their land. The pastors were with me. You know what I'm talking about? And, um, in, uh, they have oil company. You can imagine. No. They have oil where? Eh? The husband has private jet. So you cannot understand what I'm talking about. And they could not build. The woman was crying. He said, We have so, so. He said, But we can't. Every time there is a resistance. I said, Mommy, I am seeing the house where you are living. I'm seeing demons on the roof. You can have all the billions, but you will not be able to build. I mean, how can you have billions? I, I thought money is all that it takes to get it done. They, they bought a land, for instance, and then they, they, it was in, um, you know, I, I don't know where they call this, um, uh, uh, this the second estate, what they call it now? Uh, eh? No, 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 no. No. The first one that you see. Eh? Opposite Parkview. I eh, don't. No, opposite uh, Osborne. God bless you. It was in Osborne phase two. So they went to clear some land behind their land. Their land was back in water. 
And Lagos State said, no, eh, 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 inflicted the penalty on them. The penalty became so great for what they did. So because of that, they could not build. They, were, they, were, they had the connection. The governor of his state even came to beg the governor of Lagos State. You can understand what I'm talking about. They had the might. They had everything. They said no. Nothing was moving. I said, Mama, I said, this thing will not go until... I said, I'm looking at a demon in your roof. I said, let us pray. So I laid hands on her. I said, when you get home, you will tell me what happened. The woman got home. The whole roof of the house came down by the time she got home. She entered the house to see the roof had come down. Now, please understand, and that was their deliverance. A situation that several governors could not move. It wasn't even a governor that moved it anymore. Somebody that knew Lagos State Governor, somebody that knew them, was on the plane with Lagos State Governor. And the parents said, ah, how are you? And your excellency. And you know what? They put the two of them on the same seat. And he said, please, I have a request for you, from you. The local governor said, yes, what is the request? He said, please, there are these people. They, 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 they offended Lagos State. They did this, they did this. Ah, the governor said, kill you, they that's all right. He said, they have begged me in all quarters. I said, no, until they pay that heavy penalty. He said, kill you, ah. He said, this is too heavy. He said, you are one person I cannot say no to. That was how. That was how everything, everything was. Now, who put the governor and that person on the same plane and on the same, on the same row? Do you understand what I'm talking about? And this was immediately after the roof came down. Now, please, that was a serious. Please understand, ladies, even your house is waiting for deliverance. <laughs> eh? Even your car, your car, the reason why mechanic has never ceased chopping from your pocket is because the car is waiting. <laughs> it's waiting for you to bring the car to the glorious liberty of what? Of the sons of God. Ladies and gentlemen, can you count how many things are born around you? All what Pastor Me has said today, this is a challenge to everybody. Everybody is waiting. What are you doing? I want to show you something about the contract with God's power that liberates the whole world and that changes your life today. The contract with God's power is tied to one thing. If you miss it, ladies and gentlemen, you can fast till forever and never be able to walk in power. Hmm. <sighs> Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Very simple. It's very plain. No? But I pray today that you see it. And then you see how your life changes from this moment. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. I think all of us should read. Now, don't read offhand, man. I, I, know, I, I know there are Bible scholars in this place. <laughs> but let's read from the Bible. Glory be to God. So maybe we should read from New King James, right? Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Glory be to God. Are we all there? Hallelujah. Are we all there? So we all read together. One, two, go. For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, there are two things I want to, I want to explain there that gives you now an understanding of what that Bible verse is saying. You shall receive power after. That word after, it was this English people, you know, you know, people that interpreted the Bible, most of them are Methodists, Orthodox Christians, you are Baptists, Anglicans, and all that. You understand what I'm talking about? The word after is best interpreted as when. The word also means when. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, when people read it, it is after now you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost now that we now start praying to God. God will not give you another spirit called the spirit of power. It's nonsense. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit does not have a senior brother and it doesn't have a junior brother. He is both the spirit and the power of God. Do you, so when the Holy Ghost comes inside of you, power has entered. Do you get what I'm talking about? So you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon thee. Now, and thou shall be witnesses. The word witness, I was listening to my dad, uh, my mentor in faith, uh, R. W. Schambach, many, many years ago, about 30 years ago, or thereabout. It should be in the 1990s. And he was preaching and he said, and thou shalt preach the God. He said, he said, and thou shalt be witness. He said the word witness. That was the day that thing gave me. I mean, that was the day I gained proper understanding of it. The word witness simply means to preach the gospel with evidence. A witness in court is somebody who comes to give evidence. Am I right? That I saw that thing. This is how it is. Pastor Tosi did not go there. It was Mrs. Yamu that went there. That went there. Uh, it was... Pastor Tosin that paid the money. It is Mrs. Yamu that collected the benefit. This is how it went. I saw it. I was there live. Am I right? That is a what? 
a witness. So he has come to present evidence of the occurrence of something. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, to be a witness unto me simply means to preach the gospel with evidence. <laughs> what is the essence of carrying power when there is no evidence that he's alive? The Bible says in Acts chapter number 4 verse 33, the Bible says, and the apostles, the Bible says, and with great power. Can you see the place of power now? And with great power, they bore witness. Can you see that witness? To the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. What was the witness? They were with great power. What's the meaning of that? The blind was seen. The lame was. He said he's alive. Can't you, can't you see? The reason why this man is seen now is because Jesus is alive. They, with great power, they were bearing, they were preaching the gospel with heavy evidence. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is the meaning. If you want your life, ladies and gentlemen, to be with evidence of his resurrection, friends, go and preach. That power is not for non-preachers. That power is in contrast with preaching. That is the reason why when you see the people that carry power most in the body of Christ, they are evangelists. Do you notice that? Oh, you don't know. Uh, if you look at God's generous, all of them are evangelists. That's the truth. Hey, hey Allen, an evangelist. Ketun Kuma, an evangelist. Smith Ugusword, an evangelist. Uh, uh, Ora Robert, evangelist. FF uh, uh, F. Boswood, evangelist. Um, all of them, all, eh? All Paul Kane's uh, prophet evangelist. All of them, they were all evangelists. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Look at people that carry power. If you see people that work so much in resurrection of the dead and all that in Nigeria, you will talk about Archbishop Benzin, that was an evangelist. You will talk about uh, Baba Omar Pai, evangelist. People that works in multiples of miracles, you know, Kriya Kriya Crusades and all that. Look at Pastor Chris, evangelist. The reason is because the gospel, the power of God is in contrast with the preaching of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So anytime you are preaching, power follows. If you will not be, ladies and gentlemen, shy to tell somebody about Jesus, don't let me deceive you. Your life will evidence power. Ah, I don't know if you get what I'm talking about. That is exactly what God is saying. I have seen within the limited, of, I mean, not limited, within your limited opportunities God gave me, people come, I preach the gospel to them. If I, how are you? You are not yet born again. Oh, yeah, bring your hand. The other thing I'm talking about, virtually every day, I lead people to Christ. If somebody, or somebody calls me, oh, are you born again? That is, you see, because please understand, the power will only flow in your life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When you are willing to preach. The power of God is associated with you spreading Jesus. If you have nobody in a whole year to talk to about Jesus, don't let me deceive you. It doesn't matter how much you fast. Situation may not change. Do you understand? Pastor Me was talking about the situation in, um, the situation in um, Dubai. There are some certain things we don't have to say. I called Dubai. One of my sons said, you know, wanted to buy some things, but also knows about this. He said, Pastor, nobody can go out. I said, What's the situation? He said, It is raining again and again. First day, second day, it was just raining continuously. He said, Rain has flooded the whole of Dubai. He said, The hotel you stayed the last time you came. He said, Yes. He said, this, The kitchen was on the second floor. He said, Rain has, he has risen to that point and flooded the place. So you can understand what I'm saying now. They were there. Do you understand? It has flooded the place. And that's the tallest hotel the tallest singular hotel in the world. He said, rain has flooded the place. He said, rain has... I said, okay. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, do you want me to stop the rain? He said, yes. I said, yeah, let us pray. I said, you'll see what will happen now. And I made a simple prayer. And the guy called me, Pastor, the rain stopped. Instant. <laughs> I said, do you want me to stop the rain? I said, yes. Oh, yeah. I was just on my prayer chair. And I had my, my, my phone like this. I said, oh, yeah, let's pray. Ladies, they may not know what stopped the rain, and I'm not taking the glory. But I, it's what has happened here severally. When rain is falling, I said, Father, I want this rain to stop now. Rain, stop in Jesus' name. Not more than two seconds, you just see the whole thing dries. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because, you, you know, what am I just trying to say? Rain is rain, whether it's demonic or not demonic. The name of Jesus is powerful. If you are somebody spreading Jesus, you always have such results. The old news can carry that, hey, this what happened, hey, this and that. Hey. They may say, it was when they made 17 hours prayer in Dubai. That was when the thing stopped. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? But God knows <laughs> the vessels he's using to make some things happen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the same way. The affliction your family can just be stopped with one second's prayer. If somebody is willing, the contract of God's power is in life. From that day, I've noticed that if an unbeliever stands before me and I don't preach the gospel, forget about expecting power to move the next day. Because power is tied to it. Power is tied to what? To preaching. So when you see people walking in power, so many testimonies here and there, lives being touched and all that, ladies and gentlemen, go and check it. Any opportunity God gives them, even their, you know one thing, God doesn't need to give you an open opportunity. Your next door neighbor that God gave you to meet, eh? your, 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 your co-worker in office that God gives you the opportunity to meet, and you refuse to preach the gospel to them. So let me deceive you. You can be fasting for power. The power will be telling you that you are not in line with my contract. Please, you see, there, there, there is <laughs> there's something I've seen about God. God sets things in order. I was telling you about celestial uh, mechanics um, uh, uh, at the Kindle Light Series. You know, the celestial mechanics is an aspect of astronomy that studies about the movement of celestial bodies. That means the movement of bodies in the space. The heart, how the heart is moving. The heart is moving, you know, moving around, revolving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's rotating on its axis at 1,000 miles per hour. Now, the moon is moving around the heart at 2,260-something uh, miles per hour. It's moving around the heart like that. And at the same time, it's going with the heart, moving around the sun. So it's also moving or revolving around the sun. Do you understand? Invariably at 67,000 miles per hour as well. As it's moving around the heart. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, <laughs> you can see. And you know one thing? They have studied the movement so much that they can tell you when solar eclipse will take place. They can tell you when it will be at this point, at this time. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They will tell, see, they could tell April 8th there will be solar eclipse. These are the areas of the heart that will be blocked because they have studied the movement of the earth is rotating. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And as the Purawa, they have, they have even simulated everything that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They even have, you know, I don't know what science will call that kind of thing, you know, samples of them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Rotating and moving in their, in their, in their laboratories and they, are they could tell that it will be in Mexico, in so so town. It will be Ontario at so so time. By 3 p.m., it will only last for 15 minutes. It will be, do you understand what I'm talking about? They, because they have studied the movement. And they can tell the next eclipse in Nigeria is going to be March 3rd, 1930, I mean 2034. And it's going to happen in Lagos. Can you imagine? Why? They have studied their movements. Now, God set things in order like that. Now, that is to say there is a contract when God speaks that is signed, sealed and delivered, that the universe cannot escape from. The same way is with the power of God. When I was with this man of God, um, the, the, the man over John G. Lake's ministry, what was his name? Corey Blake. Corey Blake was talking about the mechanics of God's power. Ah, I was like, is God's power mechanical? Ah, when the man finished, I understand the power is mechanical. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a mechanics for God's power. Ah, Benny, I was in Benny's crusade, he was raising money, money. To the point where I was so disappointed that, ah, it was long over. We will not experience any power today. Because for, for like three hours, everything was all about, uh, the man just held the mic. I sing praises to your name. As he started, power just started moving. As he started, he, I, I was watching, I bought some tapes, I was listening to him. You know what the man said? He said, anytime I start singing, he said, I've noticed that the power of God is, is, is eating inside it. He said, power starts. Ladies and gentlemen, in the North you know what I'm talking about? He has understood the mechanics of what? It can be, look, he can be, he can be playing with everybody, he can be hitting, he can be doing everything. He knows how to trigger that power. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, there is a mechanics for God's power. God's power is tied to the contract of preaching. If you will bring somebody to church and tell the person about Jesus and get the person established in faith, ladies and gentlemen, your life will never lack power manifestation. That is how it is. I've never seen those who talk about Jesus and the evidence of power is not following them. If I look at the evidence of power following, I know a, a great man of God called me yesterday and uh, we were talking. And I just imagine some certain words I gave to this man and how God turned the whole story around. This is another man entirely. And everything came to pass. And I was just like, Pastor, you only spoke for one minute. And these things have happened for several months, again and again. 
I said, God, what is God? It's because your ministry. <laughs> That's how it is. If you won't tell anybody about Jesus, nothing. The Bible says the spirit of the prophet. He said, is, is the, he said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of the prophet. So if you won't tell somebody about Jesus, there's nothing that the, 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 the spirit. So you preaching is the manifestation of that spirit. And the manifestation of that spirit is what is called power. So ladies and gentlemen, the whole world is waiting for your manifestation. And that manifestation is tied mechanically to the contract of what? Of preaching. Just talk to somebody about Jesus. You will see light, power, glory, all this shine around you. Rise to your feet and give him praise. Worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus.
are going to begin to bring to glorious liberty everything around you. I don't know whether the devil has been sitting on your finance. Your health has been challenged. Your workplace has never given you your promotion. Begin to bring every matter of your life under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Begin to declare in the name of Jesus, I bring my finance under liberty. As a devil, I break your powers over my finances. I break your powers over my home. I break your powers over my face. Somebody pray. Your health, your finance, your academics. Lord, let there be liberation on my health, on my home. I don't care what is pressing down factors in your family. I say, bring them under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. By the power of God, bring this nation under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Bring Nigeria and the economy under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. I bring this nation under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Nigerian economy will bring under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Turbulence in every home we bring you right now to a cessation. In the name of Jesus, we bring the glorious liberty of the sons of God over every family here. By the power of God,
word of God is put in your mouth. It burns as fire in your bones. It burns in your heart. You go out there in the name of Jesus and preach the gospel. The heart to intercede for lost souls come inside of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a deep heart of intercessions. Oh, that my heart may be like waters. And my eyes may be flooded with tears for the daughters of the sons of Israel that are slain. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Everybody read. Milakota zopra lakato zakata diga brodia. Liparado centre diga rosta. One, two, go. Everybody read. That I may cry day and night for the slain daughters of Zion. Ladies and gentlemen, many as out there going into Christless eternity. Oh, that my head be waters and my eyes be fountains of tears. That I may take that place of intercession willing in the presence of God for lost souls. That Lord, genuine salvation and genuine conversion may happen. Father Nash, we pray and pray. We intercede and intercede. It says 60% of their converts stayed back in Christ. The highest level ever noticed in the body of Christ because they were born out of intercessions. I pray for you today that from today you will pray for lost souls. I pray for you today that from today you will pray for lost souls. From today, the heart will burn in you right now to recover lost souls. And the power of God, the same that is in contrast with the testimony of Jesus, that power will continually manifest around you. Welcome, and I welcome everything around you to the glorious liberty of the sons of God. God bless you. Please can you stand up as we pray for God's servant who has brought the word of God to us this morning. Can you appreciate God for their lives and thank God for his word in their mouth. Thank God for his grace upon them. The wisdom, the utterance by which God has blessed us this morning. What you appreciate God for, appreciate. So thank God for his grace upon our set man and our resident pastor give him glory give him praise thank God for their lives thank God for their homes thank God for their families thank God for all that pertains to them thank God for their ministry and I want you to please shout grace grace to them this morning that that grace will multiply the grace of God upon their life will multiply in the name of Jesus the voice will be heard father and yonder in the name of Jesus their voices will not be drowned in the name of Jesus the river of God in them will reach the hands of the earth I hope you are praying Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for answering beyond our requests. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Thank you very much. You can please have your seats in God's glorious presence. It's time to honor the Lord with our substance. It's time to bless the Lord with our offering. After now, we'll be taking testimonies. If you are not registered, you want to give a testimony, you can go to the back and register with the ushers. If you want to testify, you can go to the back and register. So please package your offerings, your tithes, your first fruits, 
covenant seeds, all that you have brought from your substance this morning to honor the Lord. You should have an envelope at the back of the seat in front of you. If you don't and you want to use an envelope to give your offerings, you can raise up your hand for all shirts to get envelopes across to you. If you are writing a check, please make them payable to Divine Glory Christian Church. You are doing a transfer. I believe the account of the ministry are already on, on the screen, or shortly they will be there. You can do your transfers in Naira and in dollar. Hallelujah. If what you are giving this morning is your tithe, your first fruit, or a special seed, please package them and rise to your feet as God's servants will release the blessings of God upon you and upon the first fruit, the tithe, and the offering first, after which um, the first fruit, the tithe, and the special seeds, after which it will also bless every other class of offering. So if you have your tithe, your first fruit, your special seed, please rise to your feet with them. I hear the voice and the spirit, and I'm hearing see what the Lord has done. The Lord said this week, that is somebody's song. <laughs> see what the Lord has done. What I've waited for. Before the end of this month, see the spirit of the living God. That song must of necessity come out of your mouth. That song must of necessity come out of your mouth. That song must of necessity. Everybody rise with your offering. Everybody. Raga, Eliate, Zemara, Rigo Baza, Brakatali, Halahag, Zahaya. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Those of us are blessed. What a way to go. I can't tell you. See what the Lord has done. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a louder hallelujah. We are in the season of the works of power. Please, for as many as will join me in praying and fasting, even from Monday is fine. You don't have to wait till Friday. We are in the season of the works of power. Don't ever forget that. And by the grace of God, thank God for the song they sang. The title of uh, um, the miracle services we'll be having on Friday night and Sunday morning, as the Lord has given unto me, is for your light has come. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 60 and verse number 1. For my light has come. That's the title. For my light has come. When illumination divinely... <laughs> Is released on a man. What happens? I see you at the vigil. <laughs> For my light as what? Uh, this is this is such a time, ladies and gentlemen, when the works of power must be accomplished in your life. You know, um, something happened recently. I was sharing a testimony. It was on Wednesday. I just brushed it, and probably I will just brush it again today. I wanted to do a very major project. Very, very major project. In actual fact, that was what made me call Dubai and I got to know Dubai was flooded. So the major, the project was quite major and I'm like, Lord, I need your power to accomplish this thing. <laughs> and then uh, I was just listening to Archbishop Benzini Dauza. And the man was talking on faith. He was just teaching from Genesis chapter one. But he just said one statement. The old preaching he preached, uh, speak the word and all that, they are the regular things we preach. But he just made one statement. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And that statement was more or less like, look, nothing get accomplished in your life until you walk it out by faith. Ah! You know what? I stopped praying over that project immediately. I stood up from that chair. I just took some few steps. I decree the opening of heavens over that project. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I had two levels, in fact, three levels of power movement. The first level of power movement moved. Some things happened. And those ones that happened were quite great. The second level of power movement moved from America. A son of mine 
hard about it. Ah, pastor, you want to accomplish this? You want to buy? He said, okay, pastor, what's the cost of all the batteries you want to buy? Ah, I said, what are you talking about? He said, man of God, just give me the cost of all. <laughs> then the third level of power movement moved again. To cut the long story short, everything has been delivered. <laughs> again and again and again. You know, <laughs> when the first level of power happened, I was in the car, I was sharing with Matus, he was wondering as he was driving. He went, ah! <laughs> I said, this is how I happened, though. This one, this one, this one. Then the second, and then the third, and, and the fourth is going to happen again. Are you guys what I'm talking about? So we are in the season of the works of power. I decided within myself that I'm going to bring my house under the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Uh, the way they have leveled my environment now, or banned by what? Uh, by a, by a, on our platform, the way they are arguing. You see, this matter is beyond argument. It's a matter of power. Let power set with the matter. You understand? You know what I decided? I said I'm removing my head completely from Nepal. So, Lord, move. <laughs> I got up that morning from that message. I went around in my room like this. I was declaring power. I said, today, miracles will happen. Friend, it just started happening one after the other, after the other, after the other, uh, until everything became accomplished. But we're there, we. You know, this morning I was just thinking within myself, I said, God, you are mighty. God, you are mighty. See how you moved. You see, the, the one that surprised me most was the one from America. Hi. The guy said, Pastor, just tell me all the batteries you need. <laughs> and in Nigeria, yeah, they were making him out that this battery is so, so, so. He said, just, I called him again. He said, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm talking about. He said, tell me all you need. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I never asked him for whatever. I was just making an inquiry in America. And he got to know. And he said, Pastor, what do you want to do with it? I said, he said just tell me all you need. Ladies and gentlemen, there is somebody here. <laughs> it doesn't matter the federal policy. You will not feel the heat. I have made up my mind. I will not buy a uh, NEPA credit on that new note, on that bandit. I won't buy. You, you don't understand what I'm talking about. The one I bought before, I see the one carry me. I will carry me until all the batteries are installed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, and then the one that God is giving, you know, through the sun, will now uh, power my house. You know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So I wake up in the morning. I say, Baba Nibati Mori Beseto, free of charge. Baba. <laughs> you know me, other? They said I should come and. You know, when I calculated how much I would be needing on Bande, it is now 700,000 naira per month to power my house. I say, in the name of Jesus, I will not buy that thing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, don't laugh, I've told you. Well, I think he told me that. But he told me himself, sir. He said, this is not sustainable. <laughs> it's not sustainable. <laughs> So I'm telling you what to do now. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So God has done it for me. He has done it for me. What's that, what's that song? What's this? What's that song? Huh? Uh -huh. He has done it. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, when I'm talking about strengthening your faith with fasting and praying, on the most holy meal. Uh, if, if you don't want to sweat on that 700,000 pounds, that Yaki Walago is listening to me. <laughs> because I'm telling you, Sister Akachi will not let him go. I, I, know, I know what I'm saying. You know, he must buy credit to his house. Every policy of no, no AC, I was told Pastor me I fast one policy now that no AC during the day. <laughs> no policy will not start. I'm <laughs> Don't bother yourself. Everyone just tell the man. He says, strengthen your word. Are <laughs> you not the funniest one of it? 
You know, very well of it. What came from abroad paid for everything. So now, forever and ever, I'll be having light without paying again. Ah. The, the wonders of faith will be accomplished in your life. Christ your faith. Jesus, 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 yeah. You are coming again. Lord said that day is power. <laughs> the we come on Tuesday. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus exceeding great miracles to happen this week in your life. I am going to open a house today for one of our members. Six apartments all together in the choicest place. Please, six. Heavy one. They are the apartment that each of them goes for about 25 million per flat. So you can understand that kind of thing. So as I am going, God will do your own. I am coming to open your home again this time. The God that you know, when come and said, I said, you know what? I can bail you out to the point where oh, because yeah, this woman. All things work together for good. Though. If Bandai policy was not made, I would have not thought about this thing. My faith would have not been charged. So every negativity the world has to offer you. I, in the name of De Jesus, declare it will turn up for your good. There's somebody here, you will not sweat again. You will not sweat again. This week, you walk victoriously without breaking any sweat. You break it on new levels without breaking any sweat. You enter into new level without any agitation. I say, without striving, without contentions, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are motivated into new heights in the name of Jesus. You know, when somebody now starts asking you, just give me the bill. You know, even if the bill is 10 naira, you can say it's 20 naira. Because even my own personal services for thinking is part of it. I You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Personal consultancy. <laughs> you get what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something? I was talking with the man who delivered the stuff to me yesterday. The man snapped it and put it on his WhatsApp. He said, Thank you for believing in us. I said, Why? Ah, he said, I'm just thanking you. I said, Have you not delivered this kind of thing? But this is a sales representative for the most major uh, whatever in Nigeria. The man said, to move in that dimension, he was just talking about it that, uh, Pastor, it requires thanksgiving for God moving in that dimension. Now, I just looked at it and I was like, this morning I woke up, I said, God, you move from there, you move from here, you move from everywhere and you paid it all. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's a realm where you don't sweat before things happen. Next Sunday, package yourself for testimony. You will surely come back and share the testimony how God took you over it without breaking a single sweat. If somebody high five, make it seven people and tell them, I will come back with testimony without breaking a sweat.
have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers and counselling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080-33-706-938 and 080-2828-1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at dgccintl stay blessed